In this video, we look at probability distribution, which is part of the AI course under topic four, statistics and probability under the subtopic of distributions. Now in the AI SL course, we'll encounter three types of distributions. We have probability distribution, we have binomial distribution and normal distribution. And then in, in addition to that for the HL course, we also have Poisson's distribution. But in this video, we are looking at probability distribution. Now, there are three key concepts to grasp in order to solve IB exam questions involving this subtopic. Uh, so let's work through these as we go through an example. Okay, so in this example here, I have a spinner, you can see here, uh, has A, B, C, and D. In the black here, I have the probabilities of, of, of each spinner. So for example, the probability of spinning an A is one half or, or 50%. And the probabilities of spinning B, C, and D are one on six or roughly 16.7%. Uh, and I have the associated prizes. So if you were to play this game, you would get a $2 prize if you spun an A, uh, you would get a big prize if you spun a B, C, uh, and you would get other prizes here for B and D. Now you're probably gonna pay some amount to play this game, but we'll get to that at the end when we talk about fair games. But just for now, think, okay, I get these prizes, which are shown in green, if I do a particular spin. So clearly you'd be trying to spin a C. Okay, let's go ahead and create a probability distribution table for this spinner. Now, in order to do that, we need to understand the concept of a discrete random variable. Now, that sounds a bit intimidating, but it's, it's really not. Random variable means a variable that is random and it varies. So in other words here, your spinner, it, it will vary depending on how hard you spin it or just a spinner in general, and, and we have a random outcome. And it's discrete because when you land on a particular section, you can clearly see which one it is and you can count it. So you can get the $2 for A or the $4 for B. So it's discrete, they're whole individual outcomes. Unlike say a continuous random variable, which we don't actually cover in the AI course, that would be something like the height of a student or the speed of a car. But in this case here, we have a discrete random variable, which simply is, well, it's the outcome of the spinner. So what are the outcomes of this spinner? And we're talking about the prizes here. What are the potential prizes when we do this spinner? Well, there are four outcomes, and I'll do it in, in orders of the letter, but the outcomes are we could win $2, we could win $4, we could win $7, or we could win $1. So this is basically A, B, C, and D. So just to recap, we had a discrete random variable, which is the outcome of the spinner. Now this lowercase x here is all the possible outcomes of this variable, and the outcomes are two, four, seven, one. So that's the first row of our probability distribution. This right here is our probability distribution table for this particular example here. Now the second row, and, and what's going on here with this notation, this reads the probability of the outcome of a particular outcome. So for example, this cell here, what is the probability of the outcome of $2? And that's this a section. Well, the probability is one half. So I can write the associated probabilities here. The next one will be one sixth. This will be one sixth. And this will also be one sixth. So right now we have completed our probability distribution for this particular example. Now let's talk about the first key concept. The first key concept is the sum of the probability. So this second row here must add up to one. And in some IB exam questions, you'll be, you might be missing a probability and you need to then go ahead and find it. And in order to find it, you can say, well, they all need to add to one. So let's figure out the remaining value. Okay, now that we have completed our probability distribution table, let's look at this term here, expected value. Now what this expected value means, I like to, I like to think of it as, an, as a, as a long-term average. So if I was to do this spinner over and over and over again, say a thousand times or 10,000 times, or theoretically maybe an infinite number of times, what is my expected result per spin? And think of it like a, it's like an average, but even better, it's actually a weighted average. So it would be, okay, what's my expected result? It's gonna be somewhere, maybe three or $4 um, on the average result. 
So the way that we calculate this expected value is, you now the formula looks a little bit intimidating, but it's not too bad. It reads the sum of, that's what this symbol here means, the sum of the outcome so for example, $2 multiplied by the probability. So let's go ahead and do that for this table. The expected value of our discrete random variable x will equal the sum of the outcome multiplied by the probability. So that's the first one. The sum of, we're gonna progressively add them up. Four times one on six, that's for b. Plus seven times one on six plus, and I'll just put this underneath here, one times one on six. And we can go ahead and use our calculator there to find the expected value of this spinning game. And I've just entered that into my calculator there. I hit enter and I get an expected value of three. So there you go. If I play this game over and over again, um, a thousand times or, or many, many times, my average results, my average prize would be three. Interestingly, my, th there is no result in just one spin that will result in the outcome of three, but the average result over many spins per spin would be three. So we call this our expected value. Now the final concept to cover is this concept of a fair game. This is often the, f the last point of a probability distribution question. It says, well, what would the cost of playing the game be in order for this to game to be fair? And by fair, it means the expected value should equal zero. So if you were to average out the total gains per spin, which in this case here is three, what would the ticket price need to be such that the result would be a zero expected value on um, long term? Now, the result of that would be for this particular question, the ticket price would need to be three to match the expected gain. So if our ticket price would be three, every game we play, it would cost three, but I would expect to get back three. So therefore the net result would be zero and therefore that game would be fair. Okay, I've just touched on the three key concepts there. I highly recommend practicing some of these probability distribution questions over in the question bank section.